Hey everyone, welcome to That Pedal Show. Dan here. Mick here, hello. That sounds absolutely killer. Yeah, it's amazing. That and sounds we'll, really amazing. Yeah, we'll get into that and all this stuff. But um, yeah, basically we're going to do a show today on why would you use two delays? Yeah, we'll talk about different sounds, we'll talk about different times, we'll talk about stereo, we'll talk about parallel, we'll talk about all this kind of stuff. But first, some housekeeping. Indeed. Uh, thank you so much for watching. A massive thank you to anyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and grabbed some merchandise. We've got t-shirts and pedals and hats and stuff all there. New tees, orange and navy fuzz, and indeed a sunburst, that pedal show logo. Sunburst. <laughs> inspired by this very guitar. Amazing. Uh, Amazing. There we are. So yeah, please go there. Also, did you mention Patreon? I haven't mentioned, I haven't mentioned Patreons. Big thank you to our patrons, uh, patreon.com slash that pedal show. Uh, we do monthly giveaways for patrons, and you can also listen to our viewers' comments and questions podcast every Monday, patrons only. If you're interested in that, please check it out. Fabulous. Okay, so let's get into it. Um, a couple of months ago, a few months ago now, I can't remember. When did, when was Andy here? It seems, seems like yesterday, Daniel. It does, it yeah. does. He's always with us. <laughs> uh, so Andy Timmons uh, was here. We did some gigs with Andy. Uh, at the time, um, Andy's signature pedal a collaboration between him and the good folks at Keeley Electronics, they released the Halo which is Andy's dual delay pedal. And we had a lot of people asking about the dual delay aspect of it. Andy's signature sound is running two delays in series together. Gets us some, you know, unbelievable sound. Also, we were lucky enough to talk to the amazing Mr. Neil Finn uh, when he was in London uh, doing a gig at the Roundhouse. And he had two memory men on his board. He actually also had a Boss Digital Delay as well he that did. he manipulated. So three delays. Yeah, three delays. But people were asking, you know, why why would he have two um, slash three delays on his board? So there's some really interesting yeah. uh, things about having a, you know multiple delays on your board. To get into, we're gonna we're gonna run through a bunch of things for you to try uh, and some suggestions of of what. Uh, specific things you might want to try. But of course, the big questions are, why have two delays? And Andy and Neil are great examples of that. So in in uh, Neil's case, for example, the two memory men are simply there for two different delay times. Yeah, exactly. He's got one set up specifically for the Don't Dream It's Over delay time, and then one memory man for the... <laughs> I only twig this, but he it's an E flat. How is it? It's an E flat. It sounds completely different, right? I always, I always thought it was a, you know. Anyway, but what guitar player writes a song like that in E flat? A piano you know player. I mean? A piano player. There you go. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so one set up for that sound, but then he has a general memory a thickening sound from another memory man that he uses quite a lot. Um, Andy's sound is basically two delays set up with lots of effect and and repeats trailing into each other which is really interesting. So rather prosaically, you might want two different delay pedals because they sound different or set up for different times and they don't have the functionality to switch between those two things simply. Sounds almost too simple to even say it, but we'll say it anyway. That's why most people have two delay pedals. Or you might want the two delay pedals to interact together. And we're gonna show you uh, various versions of all of the above. Um, thing one today is Different sounds, but the same delay time. When Dan suggested this is a thing, I was like, eh, who does that? So you have two different sounding delays, but you set them up at the same delay time and use them together. Yeah. It's Should really, we start at the beginning? Yeah, yeah. It's a really cool thing. So first of all, we're going to show you a couple of like diametrically opposed delay sounds. One being a very warm analog echo and the other being a pristine, clean digital delay. Um, so we're going to use the Oracle Analog Eth Echo um, by uh, Mythos Pedals. Really fantastic uh, analog delay that's got tap tempo. So Mick, if you wouldn't mind having schwangage on this. Okay. Here is uh, our analog delay then. <laughs> Very warm, not a lot of top end in those repeats. It's yeah, just, it almost it's, disappears yeah. it, as as it as it goes off warm. 
In opposition to that, we're going to use the DD3T. Uh, it's a, a DD3 with tap tempo uh, from Boss. <laughs> Clean, right? What you put in, you get out, but repeated. Um, now I want to. I'm going to put on the Moxie, which is the new uh, TS star pedal from Wampler. Because Brian, the world needs another tube screamer, right? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it does a bit more than that. We put it on. We thought we'd have a listen to it. So, and we're going to. I'm going to go backwards and forwards between those two. Okay. But then I'm going to put them on together and have a listen to what happens. Okay. <laughs> So, what I love about that, the two, uh, the two delay times are never going to really be bang on, and the longer those repeats are, uh, the, uh, sorry, the more feedback you hear, sort of the phasing of those. There's definitely a phasey thing, and yeah. if you just catch it right, it it, it is quite phasey actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's re it's super cool, especially for you know, sort of long sustaining notes and phrases. It's it's really beautiful. Um, yeah, let me just have a strong eyes on that because it's awesome. Take the oracle out. It's really cool. It, it, from a practical point of view, it, it would almost be imperative. It would be essential for one of the delays to be tap tempo, wouldn't it? Because to get them in, in to get time. them near enough, yeah. Otherwise, you'd be constantly. But that's cool as well. I mean, so just humor me for a second, right? Yeah. I'm going to increase that delay time. <laughs> I do most weeks, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm going to turn up the delay time for the D3. <laughs> so the DD3 is now doing a slower repeat, right? Yep. And I'm going to. I'm going to just. Using the, the time control, yeah. I'm going to try and match that. Okay. Right? And it's not going to be right. It'll be pretty close. But the thing is, being pretty close is actually what gives you gives that you phase. phase thing, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, so... right. Yeah. 
That's as far, so, that's as, as, far as, as it goes. goes. So I'll turn the I'll, I'll, I'll turn the D three down. So. It's not far off. It's not far off. So now I've listened to this. I was interested in the harmonic interplay of more overdrive. There, oh, okay. Because okay. that's where it starts to, you get loads of harmonics and extra little yeah. resonances and feedbacks, which uh, develop differently in the two delays. Yeah. So it's definitely a fun thing to try, right? If you've got two delays with different sounds, just yeah. try setting up the same. It just, I think especially if you're, if you're recording something and you want uh, just a different sort of delay sound, it's a really simple thing to do. We're just in series, one into the other. Bang. Yeah, and possibly the both the most and least obvious ways to do it because yeah. I'm not sure I've heard anyone do that. For yeah, sure somebody will be doing it. But, sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think we've ever done it on the show before. Oh, no, it's 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 really great. It's That's really, really great. cool. Yeah, really cool. Um, okay, so not entirely obvious way of doing things. Two different sounding delays, same delay time. Much more obvious and common would be different delay times on the two different sounding delays. Sure. And I guess. Always difficult to make generalizations, but a common way to approach that would be a slapback delay from your analog echo yeah. and your d digital delay longer and cleaner. Sure. So if you think Should about we have a look at that. Yeah, yeah. The analog delay is really interesting because it cleans up the shorter you go with your delay time. And it's just the, the nature of basically analog sampling. So as we shorten that delay time, that dark, crunchy character changes and we get more fidelity yeah. in our delay time. Let it be said that plenty of uh, famous slapback users have used basic digital delays for their slapback, by the way. You don't have to use an analog delay. We're just going to do that here today. Yeah, sure. So if you have some knowledge in this, and I'll set up a nice slappy... Slapping back. Slapping of the back. <laughs> Some talent booster, then. Really gorgeous slap back. It's still not getting in the way, but it just adds a thickening thing. I really mm. like it. Now I'm gonna we're gonna put that sound into a longer, uh, more atmospheric uh, pad textury type delay with the. Uh, this is the ARP87 from Walrus. And in order to do that, you'd have a much longer delay time. Yes. So at the moment, that slap back, uh, slap back for. Detail fans is going to be somewhere between 120 and 150 milliseconds or thereabouts, isn't it? Yeah. 120 probably. Yeah, maybe even maybe even lower than that. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Classic slapbacks you'll find between 100 and 150. Sh sure. Yeah. Sure. So this is the sort of the sound of the uh, a, a longer delay with the ARP 87. <laughs> So it's warmer, it's got a bit of modulation on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 
So now we're going to put the slap back into that. <laughs> Nice. Sorry about the sharp G string. <laughs> so one new, thing, new frets, getting used to having actually having some frets. It, it does sound spectacular. It sounds nice. Just yeah, readjusting yeah. me all playing there a bit, Dan. So one thing about, I, I guess, with a slap back and a long delay, we're really used to having a slap back early on because one of the things that we're going to show in a second is the slap back can sound really good before game stages. Yeah. Right. So we're going to get into that, but. I wanted to show you one thing. With a slapback before a longer delay, what you get is this. You get the you get the slap. Yeah. But then you get the repeat of that slap. Okay? A really cool thing to do is swap that around and have the longer delay going into the slap. And what you end up with, you get all the, the, the warmth and the texture from the longer delay, and that is doubled with, oh, okay. with a slap We delay. can demonstrate both of those things. I'm just gonna, let me just, I wanna flick this Moxie over into the less mid-boosted mode. Okay. Just to see if it sounds a little bit open and clearer. We might, might help us hear the delays a bit better. Have okay. a play a sec. Very, very classic tube screamer in the other mode. Yeah, We've yeah. just taken away some of those mids and yeah. made it a bit more open. Nice. Open EQ. Nice. Okay, so this is the slap into the uh, longer delay. I'm just going to change that. And what you get is the doubling of the longer delay because that's that's going into the analog delay right, right. so you, you're still getting you're still going to get that slap because uh timing wise it still hits the it slap still hits first. that first yeah. right but signal path wise the 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 long delay then goes out into okay the slap okay? let's see if so, I, can, I can hear that i wasn't hearing much difference in that example but. sure I actually think I prefer the slap after. Yeah. Weirdly. It's so, it's thickening up. Yeah. You've got the, the long repeats going into the slap. So it basically doubles that the long repeats as opposed to just having the, the, the slap sort of echoed. Huh. It's really cool. So 
again, it's just rethinking these things, right? We're so used to having, you know, short delay slap in the front, uh, long delay at the end. Actually, yeah. It, you know, try it the other way around. It's really cool. It is really, really cool. There's one thing I want to just um, expand upon there a little bit. So I, I don't know how short the Oracle goes. We'll find out. If, if we said before that slap is somewhere between 100 and 150, depending on your preference, if you come down from there mm -hmm. and you get down towards 30, mm -hmm. you're into that doubling delay, which can sound yeah. really cool. I'd, we'll see if the Oracle go that short. I'm not sure it will. Um, it's an extension of what we just what we've just tried really so it might be that you really love that doubling delay sound yeah, yeah. to pu punch we've always said it sounds great to punch a solo forward yeah so all we're going to do is shorten the delay time on the oracle from a slap to a just have a play a second we'll see see if that's going to work Do me a favor, before you carry on doing that, just play a riff a sec. Play a power chord riff. Yeah. Neck, man that's really cool killer that's really cool absolutely killer yeah why would you want two delays run one as a one one as a doubler and one as your actual delay love that awesome. I, I i would probably use that more than the slapback actually yeah right just for, for the kind of thing i play but yeah it's a beautiful it just thickens things up yeah. and just pushes everything forward so cool yeah so, so obviously then one short delay one long delay um some great sounds to be had when you when you mix them yeah the next, the point three, I guess, moving on from that is, for those of you who use overdrive in your amps, yeah. um, running a delay pre-overdrive can sound, it's a great sound, and it's been used in many genre of music and sounds completely awesome. We will demonstrate in a sec. Maybe not the awesome bit, but we'll demonstrate. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the, the standard accepted, most people, whoever most people are, tend to prefer the delay post overdrive. Sure. Which is kind of one reason the effects loop was invented in a way, mm. to get the time-based effects after the overdrive, which we'll demonstrate in a sec. So it might be that if you do, if you have an amp with overdrive, we have one here, you might want to run one delay up front and one in the loop of your amp. Sure. So another good reason for having two delays. As it happens, on the floor next to the TS-1 there, I'll do a detail shot so you can see it, we have a free the tone flight time digital delay. That's running in the effects loop of the TS-1. And hopefully we'll be able to give you a, a demonstration of um, something in the front and something in the loop just to give you an idea of the difference in the sound. Yeah. And then set up the kind of thing you'd run, you might want to run in the front of overdrive and after. Sure, sure. Okay, so again, we'll just use the DD3 just for a, you know, a long, clean delay. Yeah. If you, let's turn on the... Yeah, let's get a, a, an overdrive sound set up. So we're going to need to turn the other amp off, which I believe we've already done. Yep. So this is the overdrive sound. I might pick up some humbuckers in a minute, but this is the overdrive sound of the TS-1. <laughs> We 
might add a bit more overdrive. That sounds amazing. Make it louder. Turn it up. <laughs> Turn the reverb down a bit. Just one final thing. I'm just going to bypass the tone stack and see if that improves or makes it less nice. Yeah, prefer it. There are times when you want that. There yeah, are times yeah, yeah. when you want that extra fizz, but yeah, I. Far out, man. That sounds amazing. Yeah, and we'll try uh, some humbuckers as we get going. Okay, so if we've got a um, delay going into the front of that, yep. let's use the DD3. Yep. This is what we'll get. Pretty messy. Yeah, so the delay is being distorted, right? Just as your guitar goes in and the amp does all of its lovely stuff, the delay sound is actually hitting that preamp and then that's distorting. As opposed to... Here it is in the loop of the amp. Yeah, and yeah. much less fussy and getting in the way. Yeah. So what can be really cool is having one delay in the front and one delay in the loop. And what we find works really great in the front is that doubling delay, you yeah. know, um, going from a really short delay time. And it can really th thicken up yeah. the front end of an amp. So I'll, just I'll put some humbuckers on just for a sec okay. so that uh, the humbucker people stay happy. Part way between the two. It's so cool. Now, remember, because the amp is limiting everything that's going in the front end, you need to be careful with the level of yeah. the of the that delay. However, find the right spot. It's a flipping magic thing. So you might want to run your level a little lower than you would normally. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Oh. In which case, uh, how much have we got on the? Okay, got five fifty-six milliseconds on the um. 
on the flight time, which is probably too much, but no. oh, I don't know, let's shorten it up in a minute. Let's see, let's see. So this is um, analog, somewhere between doubling and slap back in the front before distortion, and then uh, digital delay in the loop after distortion. All right, let's turn it on. <laughs> Juicing up the amp even more there with the tunic, which we'll hear a bit more of in a bit. I, that's such a cool sound. It is a killer thing. Yeah, because the the doubling stroke slapback gives you the punch. Really, really does just punch you out of that mix. I think a lot of people, when they've got their amp set up like that and they think I need more, the first thing we all do it, we all go for gain. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? We all go for more level, more distortion. Actually, that. You know, because it, it just gives us that, that push without fundamentally changing the gain structure of the amplifier. That, I think it's awesome. It is a really great sound. Yeah. And an example of, you know, you'll hear lots of people say never run delay or echo before overdrive. And there's many cases in which it works fantastically. Yeah, totally. So, um, yeah. So one before overdrive, one after overdrive. And whether that is via the effects loop in your amplifier or simply the placement of your pedals on the board into a clean amp, the signal chain remains the same, whether yeah. the amp's doing the overdriving or whether your pedals is doing the overdriving. Yeah. Sound Beautiful. Like, sounded like Danish Pete there, whether your pedals is doing the overdriving. <laughs> Sorry, Pete. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, what was that, number three? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Um, this may be the most obvious. Number four might be the most obvious use of two delays for a lot of people, which is the kind of timed repeats. Yeah. We'll show you a couple of examples, but where the two delays are repeating to create a pattern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll turn the, we'll go back to the clean channel on the TS1 and I'll turn the loop. Delay off. Delay okay. off, so you'll only be hearing these ones. I'm qualified for that. <laughs> right, so what we're gonna do we're going to set up not wildly dissimilar delay sounds. Um, 
but we're going to change the delay time. But the, the delay time is going to have a relationship. Some, a mathematical relationship, shall we say. Uh, we may well invoke the loop delay again then, because it will be easy. <laughs> okay, well, I can do it here. There's, you know, really simple. So I've got the, let's start off with the DD3, okay? So, DD3. So let's say that that delay time is our quarter note, right? What do I mean by quarter note? It's the bar divided into four, quarter. One, two, three, four, right? So there's our quarter note. Now, a lot of people have done this, and it's actually in the Andy Timmons, the, the halo, this is part of that sound. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set up the ARP 87 to be a dotted eighth, which is, uh, a dotted eighth, which is three eighth notes, which is three quarters of a quarter note, right? Take a quarter note, divide it into four. Two of those is an eighth. Add another one on, you got three quarters of your quarter note. So a really cool feature in a lot of delay pedals is the ability to tap the quarter note, but to give you other um, divisions of that quarter note. So on the ARP87, I've set up the tap tempo to be a dotted eighth. So if you, let's say for argument's sake, the DD3T was at 500 milliseconds at the moment. Yep. It's not far out, but let's say it was at that. If you tapped a quarter note at 500 into the ARP when it's set to the dotted eighth subdivisions, it will give you three quarters of that quarter note, which maths, math tells me is 375. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So... Incidentally, those are the two delay times in the halo, if you're interested. Andy Timmons, uh, quarter and dotted eighth notes are 500 and 375. Oh, right. Are they? He told me that with his own uh, <laughs> mouth. <laughs> As opposed to... Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> tap danced it out. <laughs> Mick, Mick, my Mick. talking. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like a mint? <laughs> oh. Okay. So I'm going to tap. Yeah the same delay time as on the DD3, right? <laughs> so I'm just laughing how much ahead of the beat Dan is with his tap. Let's see. So that's the DD3 and this is the AP87. Timing. <laughs> so, <laughs> one, two, three. <laughs> okay, so the delay set up with the dotted eighth note is going into the delay with the quarter note. And you get, I'll add the dotted eighth note in as I'm playing. Add the tunic on this.
apart from Andy Timmons, most famous user user of quarter and dotted eighth? That would be uh, Sir Edge. Yeah. Let's see. Every time I've ever tried this in a video before, it's never worked. Just give me the DD3. I thought that went about as well as it was ever likely to go, so we'll leave it there. <laughs> but that's that, but that's the idea. That's right? that sound. And exactly. if, if, if you ever wondered idea. how, I mean, this is many, many, many people know this, but if you don't know this, if you're ever confused about how he plays something so simple and gets those lovely patterned uh, parts in the songs that really glue that band together, mm. that's how. Absolutely. And it's a killer sound. It's, it's really, such a great yeah. sound. I guess um, we should mention Albert Lee with that as well. It was a big, oh, yeah. uh, the dotted eighth sound, but not with the quarter, just yeah. the dotted eighth with Albert Lee. Uh, country boy yeah. solo, that's that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, very cool. And you can really build those rhythmic lines. And then, of course, down the ages, so many players use classic multiple repeats. Now, in Hank Marvin's case, for example, we should mention him. Uh, he would do it in one unit, which had multiple heads, but you can create those multiple heads using two or more delay pedals. Yeah, so as a as a demonstration, not a Hank Marvin thing, but the, the quarter note dotted eighth note is a really famous thing, but there are so many more subdivisions that we can use. Yeah, what's right? the ARP got in it then? So Triplets? It's got everything. It's, you, you name it, baby, we yeah. got it. So if you can just play... Oh, well, I'll just grab the strat because I might see if I can remember any Hanky stuff. Okay. Probably can't, but there we are. Mr. Hanky. One friendly South Park yeah. viewers. I, I'm doing this deliberately because it sends all the Hank fans apoplectically angry when we get it wrong. <laughs> something quicker so a triplet try a triplet there's the, so to, there's to the triplet upset, to not upset the hank fans any further his delays would be quicker when there's more of them yeah yeah but yeah. that's so that's a triplet and a coordinate together. Yeah. All right. Nice. So uh, let's try another one. Here. By the way, Dan, did I tell you? <laughs> I'll, st I'll stop now, I promise. <laughs> so just give it a little skank. Start a day.
that's ace. So we can really hear fun with that, subdivisions. That flanging of the repeats because as opposed to the when we had the analog, frequency wise they're so different. Yeah. Right? But because the frequencies in those two delays are so much closer, there's a lot more of those frequencies there to mix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So and again that comes back to having two delays just set up with the same, you know, delay. It's nearly the same. I tapped it in, so it's never going to be the same. But actually, that's a part of it, right? Having yeah, yeah. that difference, it's really cool. Yeah, really, really cool. And, you know, why not just buy a... Um, what's the gold thing from... Yeah, them. Uh, the Volante. Why not just buy a multi-head Echo? Well, for sure, you can do that. What's really cool about having different delay pedals is all the different controls and the yeah. fundamentally different sounds are available because they're different. Yeah, yeah. You will have some horrific car crash moments of not being able to tap it properly but that's i've had part, them today that's part of the fun isn't it <laughs> so the last one uh, i want to do is show you some uses of parallel so up to this point everything's been series right it's been one delay into the next one and then out into both amplifiers the sound i set up at the start of the show was actually two that I would split the signal and then the delays went to different amplifiers. So when we think of stereo delay, most of us are going to think of ping pong. Yeah. Right? Where we'll hit a note and it delays in one side, then delays in the other, you know, giving us a ping pong delay. Actually, I much prefer having two separate delays just going into the different amplifiers. I again for the reasons of character and that sort of stuff and also because unless i'm using two amps exactly the same i want different things from the delay going into different amplifiers just to confirm that you've been hearing more or less apart from when we did the uh use the effects loop you've been hearing two amps together for the whole video everything we've done has been both delays hitting both amps in series so you can do it with one amp but now, if we're talking about parallel, you need two amps. For this, we do. Yeah. This is a this is a faux stereo yeah. thing, and, we, and then I'm going to do a something thing after this where you can use one amp. Where it could this, be one amp. Okay. Exactly. But yep, for this yep, yep. thing specifically, we need two amplifiers. So, if I set up the sound with the uh, ARP and the DD3, like we just had, okay. And I'm going to go back to that dot of eight thing. You can hear the repeats of one echo going into the next echo and repeating, right? So it's repeating the repeats, right? So once more. What I'm going to do now is split them and have one echo go on one side, and one amp, one echo go on the other. So never the twain shall meet. Never the twain shall meet. They what? don't, one doesn't echo the other, they only ever do their own thing. Exactly. Wow, that's amazing. Yep. It's so much cleaner. I, I will have panned the um, audio left and right there so you get a clear indication of what's going on. Yeah. And I love that. Uh, 
exactly as you said, because it's cleaner, but the, I mean, there are times when it's really cool to have those delays going in together and sort of uh, interacting, but done like this, where I can have that lovely stereo spread, but also, as we are doing before, if I want, like I've, I, for anyone that's seen the show of, of the rigs that we use for the Andy Timmons gigs, I've got my J20 and that's quite compressed. What I would do is have my slapback, my tight delay Go into, into that. the into that alone. Yeah, yeah. And then the the large. So I mean, I can do that if I. Um, Okay, so what I'll do is I'll put the slap back into the TS1 and the ARP87 into the custom signature reverb. So just the classic reverb. And the TS1. And it just goes, eh? Yeah. You'll get the full effect in uh, in your headphones if you're listening in headphones because it will be panned left and right. Yeah. And you'll hear the effect of those two delays uh, going into the different amps. Sorry, I keep looking over there because I'm. he's worrying uh, the preamps. It's my, it's my I, gift. I just need to make sure that we're still okay. <laughs> so that idea of a stereo delay being, a, you know, a simple ping pong left, right, actually there's with two delays, there's so much you can do. So much more you yeah, can do. Yeah, treating really cool. it as, uh, I mean, you don't have to pan it left and right, but treating it more as dual mono, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that is, the, that's a parallel thing, right? We're splitting the signal that goes into two different delays and then out left and right. Now, if you've got one amplifier and you want to do a parallel thing, absolutely you can do it. What you're doing is you're summing the outputs of the delay, but you do run into an issue and that issue is this. If I've got, if I've split my signal and I go through two delays, I've got two delay sounds, but I've also got two direct sounds. Oh, of course, yeah, okay. Right? So here's what happens. I'm gonna go from series and without even adding any delay, I'm gonna to go to the parallel where it sums and you can hear. <laughs> So by splitting that signal and then summing it again, we get this. You get two. You get exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll set up the stereo delay with the two delays left and right. Yep. And then I'll sum them and have a listen to what happens to the direct sound. So what you need to do, if you want to do that, and I personally, I love doing this, but what you need to do is kill the direct sound, kill the direct line on one of the delays. In one of them. So kill, yeah, kill dry on one of the delays. Exactly. So I've set that up on the chrono. So if we have a listen to just the chrono by itself. So 
So now when I go parallel, I'm not getting that volume boost. Yeah, you don't get the double. Because I've only got the one direct sound. So, you know, if, if you want to do the parallel thing, uh, you know, which I which I, I love, just remember. Kill dry and you've one. You've got to kill dry and one. And again, the benefits of the parallel is the delay stay out the way of one another. Exactly. So one delay doesn't delay the other. They maintain that separation so they don't start all crashing into one another, which can be exactly what you want in some sounds, but maybe not in others. Yeah. Uh, one of the reasons I love the echo system is because it does that. You can get the, you can split it left and right, but you can also get the parallel thing. So if I, you know, just go to the normal thing, I turn on the echo system here, and then I've got, you'll hear the, the slap back, which is just a single slap and then a long echo. As opposed to the but up, but up, but up. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, they stay so, separate. Exactly. So that's you know one of the reasons I've. And you were telling me that that's one of the few multifunction delays that can do parallel. Yeah, parallel like that. Yeah. But it's got it's got two different engines in it. Yeah. The Future Factory uh, has got the two engines in it, and you can get different, uh, totally different delays out of left and right, but it doesn't have that summing thing. Yeah. Um, whereas this does that. Uh, and because I also want uh, run wet dry, all that's coming out of one amp, and yeah. the and the other amp is just no delay at all. So, yeah, that's a really good. If all of this stuff, you know, you you love the idea of doing that stuff. I mean, there are other delays, I'm sure that can do it. But for me, they the two engine thing in this is, and the ability to sum it is really really clever. Nice. Uh, my head's a bit blown by the last bit. Uh, it, I think if I'm right, the, the the elevator pitch on parallel delays is they just sound cleaner. You get the two delays, but they don't crash into one another. They don't interact. Yeah. The repeat from one isn't being repeated again and again by the next one. They're yeah. just separate. Yeah. And it's a it's been done that way uh, by a lot of artists, but I think um, you know when we hear the word stereo, we think of a single delay. The, the signal goes in, we get two outputs, and it's it's the delay that just goes from left to right. Actually, there's there's so much more that you can do. If you relate the times to each other, as, we, as we've done with the tap tempo, yeah. man alive, it's, it's epic, the stuff you can do. Yeah, it's instant soundscape, instant texture, instant yeah. inspiration, isn't it? If yeah. you lock in to that particular time. Yeah. Sorry, every time you say actually, I've got an image of you with your hands on your hips, stamping your feet. Actually, actually, <laughs> here's a t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Cool. Hope you enjoyed that. Yeah. A um, lot of fun. We didn't really get into the Scarlet Tunic. We'll do that in another video. Uh, I think we had a reasonable listen to the Moxie. I actually really like it. Yeah. I had the Scarlet on for, for a couple of things. It's, yeah, uh, we didn't mess about with it. No, we didn't mess bits. about with we'll it. We'll do that some, a, yeah. some other day. There's a lot going um, on. It's a Selma treble and bass. Uh, pedal basically it's there to emulate the sound of that amp so yeah we'll, we'll look at that in in the future indeed if there is one if there's a future <laughs> oh my word well on that uh, on that note uh what thank we you. need is just a sharp end to the <laughs> we do it we'll do that and just sort of fade up from black after yeah, that yeah, moment. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for watching um a massive thank you to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe are... Uh, Anderson's Music of Guildford in Surrey, where you can buy pretty much all of this stuff. Also, our mates in Australia. Pedal Empire of Brisbane in Queensland. Hello to Matt and the gang. Uh, no doubt you can get some of that stuff there. Two Indeed. links in the uh, description below. And for our American friends. Uh, go to thatpedalshop.com, uh, where you can buy pedals and amps and accessories and various other things. Thatpedalshop.com. Fantastic. Also, massive thank you to our... 
patrons on Patreon. Yes, uh, every Monday we do VCQ, and if you don't like sitting through the video, you can listen to the podcast the day after if you are a patron. Uh, Patreon.com, that pedal show. Fabulous. Thanks so much. Have a fantastic weekend. We'll see you on Monday for viewers' comments and questions. Uh, but till then, be good, stay safe, and we'll see you soon. And get two delays. Two delays. Bye. Bye. <laughs>